Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. We're gonna make a really quick and easy card today, but we're gonna do a really fun technique. Um, it's a background technique, and we're gonna do it. It's called yeah, uh, what's it called? I forgot. Oh, uh, <laughs> inked embossing. Yeah, there we go. We've started off so well, haven't we? Oh, well. Uh, so what you want to do is begin with an embossing folder and um, an ink pad and a brayer. Now, you could just smoosh your ink pad down there on the embossing folder, but it's not going to give you as good a result. So I'm just using this mini brayer to ink up to get some pigment ink on my, um, my little roller here, and I'm just giving it a nice coat of ink. I'm gonna do it a couple times. I try to go like I'll do uh, horizontal one time, ink it up, and do vertical the next, and that does it pretty well. And it's not gonna be perfect, so don't worry. You don't even worry about it. I'm gonna set that aside, and then um, I'm gonna grab a little piece of paper which I didn't bring over here. So hold on one moment. Boy, we got off to a smooth start today, didn't we? I'm gonna set this right in here. It's just a piece of cheap white card stock. I'm just gonna get it right there on the fold and close my embossing folder around it so it doesn't um, move a bit while I'm doing this. And it's better to have it a little bit bigger so that way um, you can kind of control where the ink goes. And I got my big shot here. And when you're using an embossing folder, it's a good idea to put it folder side in first, the fold of the folder in first, just keeps it from stressing out the uh, embossing folder. And I've noticed that I seem to get um, more inking on one side. So what I'm gonna do is actually flip it around and go back the other way. So after it comes through, without trying not to move it in the folder, I'm just gonna twirl it around so that I've got more pressure on the other side and run it back through. And hopefully that'll solve my problem there. I'm using my old platform because I like that better with uh, for embossing folders. And I'm gonna take that out. And actually this is the best, uh, this is the best coverage I've got so far. So you almost have a letterpress look here. So yeah, flipping it around makes a big difference, especially if you're, you know, you get an older machine that may not be perfect. Um, and now what we're going to do is do some uh, heat embossing and I'm gonna pause that. Well, actually, you know, I can, I can use this for my scrap paper. This will work. Um, so what I have here is a variety of different powders and I've never used this before, so I'm gonna try it out. Um, this is called Verdigree, so it's got a couple different shades of, you know, green and copperiness. I don't want to cover up everything, I just want to kind of add some. And it's going to stick to that embossing ink that I had used, which was a copper pigment ink. I'm going to use uh, this Rust Tapestry. Now, embossing powders can go bad, so if you've, uh, if you've got some old embossing powder and you're noticing it's just not... Um, not heating up very well, it's not melting, it's just kind of looking really dusty and rusty there. Um, you may have just gone bad, so that happens. It tends to happen more in, um, I think, humid, really humid areas. I'm doing a little bit of gold in here. Not too much. And I'm not gonna dump any of that back in my uh, containers because it's just gonna be, um, it'll make a, make a mess. So I'm just gonna shake it around a little bit. And I'm gonna pour what's left. See, there isn't much waste. I'm gonna pour that back on in a few spots, get it kind of, so I don't waste it. It's just going to give it a very distressed look. Now you don't have to do anything else. If you like just that inking, the inked look, you could just leave it and that's fine. You don't have to do anything else. I just kind of wanted to push it a little bit more. And now I want to zoom in while I heat this up and you can kind of see the change as it happens to the paper. You got it in there. Uh, this might take a little bit longer than like doing the clear. I've got quite a bit of area to cover here. If I hold it up, you could see it. I just want, if I hold it at an angle, I think you might be able to see, see it a little bit better as it changes. That verdigris is kind of pretty. Just be careful not to get too close to your fingers. And um, you don't want to scorch your paper. So, and that's the other thing, older embossing powders, if they're starting to go bad, you'll probably notice you're scorching your paper and nothing's happening. Um, so it's a time to, you know, it's a good idea to, if that happens, just toss it. I luckily have had really good luck. I bought embossing powders on yard sales and I've had some given to me and I have some that's really old that I purchased myself brand new and I've had really good luck um, with them but you know it's, it tends to be the more metallic colors that go off like your um, your coppers, your golds, anything with t any of the tinsels or the uh, the glittery ones, anything with like any metal in it, that seems to be what goes. The uh, the coppery, rusty ones, I think, are the the ones that tend to also go bad the quickest. Now I can also see if I want any more. This was actually a mix 
that was I had some leftover powder. I didn't want to put it back in my um, my container because I had mixed a few colors together. And that's another thing you don't want to say like, oh look, I got a half a thing of copper here and I got half a thing of copper there. I'm just going to mix them into one container. Don't do that because one might tarnish before the other, and then you've just ruined the whole uh, the whole batch of it. I'm going to heat that up a little bit more. So I, I don't remember what's in that mix. I could see some green and some copper and, you know, but it was just going to be thrown away otherwise because I couldn't put it back in the original container. So that's what I do. I will mix them up if they're left over, like on my waste catcher sheet, but I never pour um, unknown embossing powders in with another pure embossing powder because you'll, if one goes off, you're going to ruin the whole thing. All right, so I kind of like that. That looks interesting. Put my, put these away and cap everything off so I don't get ink in my stamp pad or... Uh, one Boston powder on my stamp pad or anything. All right, so now, I mean, that looks even kind of cool just on its own, but I want to do a little more to it. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to grab some gel sticks or gelatos. I've got, this is a gel stick. They all play nice together. I get, you know, I get so many comments of people like, you cannot use gel sticks in, in artistic things because, oh, they might have acid in them and they're not permanent. They're, you know, they're meant for kids, not crafters. Well, you know what? I think if it looks like a duck and talks like a duck, it's probably a duck. I cannot tell the difference between the, you know, except for the price, between the two lines. And of course, gelatos come in a lovely color assortment. They're both good, but to tell you the truth, I can't tell the difference. And, um, and they don't have life fast ratings or pigment information on their website. So I really think we're getting the same thing. There would be much more information out about them if it was, you know, on the artist range. My crafter's range tends to be more of a student range. I'm just going in and blending it with my homemade gelato blender. I showed you uh, how to make these on a video a while back. I'll try to remember to throw the link in for it. If not, just go to my uh, just go to my YouTube channel. If you click that lovely picture of me, if you just click that, it'll take you to my channel, and you can just search a little search box there, foam blender, and you'll get a couple different versions. But this is one of them. This is the most recent one. They're wicked awesome. Wicked smart. Wicked smart. If you make these, you'll be wicked smart. That's all I'm saying. Dia. <laughs> all right. And I'm going to add a little bit of my homemade shimmer spray. Because you know I'm not spending $7 for a bottle of shimmer spray. All right. And then, you know, you can let it dry. You can heat it to let it dry. I like to let it dry, then kind of wipe it. So I pull it off of the uh, the shiny parts. Um, this does have shimmer in it. So, you know, if I wipe it off, I might wipe off some of the shimmer. So I just let it let it dry and then kind of wipe it. But you can see, you get some really cool texture. It almost looks like a stamped tin, which I love. I love that look. All right, let's set that aside. And wouldn't it be nice if I had a towel here so I could wipe up my mess? But it appears that I do not. So we're going to make a card. We're going to try not to make, we're not going to try not to get it in the goo. Here I have a salmon colored card base and some doodads that I have previously stamped. I'm going to grab my adhesive gun. Are we, we're not even in frame because I don't want to stick that in the, you know what? Hold on. I'm pausing it. I'm going to wipe my table. Yeah, don't be a numma, Lindsay. Wipe your table down before you put your card stock there. <laughs> Oh boy. Apologize to the fellow people of my the great state of Maine <laughs> for that accent. Although it's surprisingly accurate. Alright, we'll put our background there. I'm covering up. I'm not leaving a border. You could leave a border if you wanted to, but I really liked how when I put the the, the quarter sheet of paper in there, I liked that little border I got because of the way that I the side that I inked. So that was my creative decision. You can leave a border if you desire that's completely up to you and I may have to trim it off a little bit I sometimes it's hard for me to line things up oh well that's going to be good enough and then I'm going to put down this it might be kind of hard for this to stick because it is um that's awfully uh, waxy from the gelato so I might actually need to hot glue it we'll see if this will stick if not we'll bring out the big gun the big guns the hot glue gun well, you know what? I think it's going to be fine. All right, so these I already put a little foam square on this. Uh, this is stamp is by um, artneco.com. It was a leftover from last week's tutorial where I showed you how to do the cool see how I embossed it. So I got kind of the look of those fancy schmancy um, die cut embossed stamp images that are oh so popular and oh so pricey. So, and I have so many stamps. You know what? I want to be able to get these technique looks with what I already have. I'm sure you do too. 
and a couple buttons to finish it off. And there we have a card that is pretty enough for a lady, but fine for a guy too. Strong enough for a man, but peach balanced. What was that commercial? Remember that one? Secret, I think it was. It's strong enough for a man, but peach balanced for a lady. I don't remember. Raise your hand if you're sure. I clearly am not. There we go. Then we get a card. How about that? In just about 10 minutes. Fancy. Well, there you have it. I really like the uh, the metal look of the inked embossing, plus a little extra. Also, it's the challenge this month at Oriental Stamp Art. So if you're, uh, if you're part of that group, howdy. Glad that you came along and checked it out. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed, I've got, I just checked, oh my gosh, I have over 40,000 subscribers. I am just completely overwhelmed and thrilled. And thank you so much, guys, for subscribing. That means the world to me. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.